to the cloud. Um, so I have this book on signs and symbols. So we'll come back to this one. Um, and, oh, how did I do this? Let me zoom out on these guys. So these are signets. So these are all um, kind of just like artist, uh, you know, the artist stamps. So I don't know if you would, if like, if there was a drawing, they'd stamp it, or if it was like a seal, you know, I'm not, I, I, this is what I actually don't know. And this book is full of really good, like a high volume of content, but it doesn't go into depth about, you know, each one. Like there's no, like this one, this one, for example, is the one at the top, which I think we're, which I, which I want to draw. I want to draw a couple of these. Um, this is Albrecht Durer, or no, excuse me, this is Michelangelo. So this is how Michelangelo, we would either sign his prints, his drawings. Oh. Um, yeah, and I don't, think, I don't know if you would sign any of his paintings that way. And I haven't even, like when I say a, a recent discovery, I mean, I just found this page, you know, yesterday. Um, this is Anthony Van Dyke, the Dutch painter. Um, this down here, this one is the most elaborate one. This is Lucas Crunch, Kronk, the elder, like that German painter. Um, who are some of the other famous ones? This one, this is this is Franz Halls up here, the F into the H. Um, you probably remember Toulouse Lautrec. So Lautrec would go, it was like a T, and then that T turned into an H, and that H turned into an L, and then he put that inside of a circle. Uh, why, so did was, they do that? why did they do these? You know, they were on their rings. They were on their rings. They were six signet rings. Oh, you know, when yeah. They... So they re so they really were for like letter sealing. Yeah. Oh yes. Okay. Okay. Um, the other thing, I mean, the other thing about them is I taught Hi, them. Hi, Stacy. Hey, hey, what's Hi, up? Hi, everyone. Good morning. So... Good morning. I'm so glad you made it, Stacy. Well, I'm really glad I made it, and um. I'm so glad I was able to let you know I would be a few minutes behind, and um, here we are. We did a, yeah. um, I started recording. I noticed that. I'm so oh, glad. Thanks. <laughs> no, it's, it's all because of you, Stace. Well, that's nice of you to say. <laughs> um. I know that had I not said it, the ladies would have just stepped right in there. <laughs> Oops, I have no doubt. Well. What's that, Adele? She, she taught us well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I still I still haven't learned. It's, it's tough to teach. So these are signet rings that they carried, that they all had on their rings so they could seal letters, mainly. Oh, neat. Yeah, I think so. And documents, OK. Um, wow. But they're also, the other, I mean, the other cool thing about them is that they're all really, they're all like, they're all really well designed. So they're just incredible um, little, yeah, I don't, like it's, they're, the way that I did, I taught it yesterday, one of the kids just kind of came up with his own personal one. You know, and I've actually, thought, I, I, I've never had one before. I mean, I shouldn't say I've never had one before, but I, I've never known that other artists had them. I thought it was just, I thought it was just Latrec having a clever way of writing his initials. Mm -hmm. I, but like Latrec came from like, you know, a royal family. So like he would have had one oh. either designed for him or he designed his own, but he would, he would have one. Like he was part of a class of people that would, would have, you know, signets. Um, anyway, so this one, this one is mine. It's T. <laughs> and then J. And then another T. Oh, I like that. I think the tail's a little bit too long. Hold on. So you, you use the same T twice? Or is there a small well, T? Trevor, in the big t Trevor Jude Twist. And it could be any one of them. Oh, I see. BJT. That's the one that I've come up with. <clears throat> and I could probably make it after 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 seeing more of the designs, 
there's like a lot of like fun yeah uh, yes. accent that can happen to these things like you can take it far in fact i think the most like kind of the most masculine i think the most interesting <laughs> have been these from foundries so these are um and that's the other that's the other interesting component too it's like painters have like a certain look <clears throat> um you know goldsmiths and artisans have a certain look um potters like pottery ones were really really interesting these are great um, yeah i love 10 yeah. four yeah. yeah yeah oh yeah obsessed with this like it's like a four yeah. and then i don't know what would it be would it be like just flipped upside down it's not a mirror yeah but, mm. do we know who that is yeah yeah let me, and this is the thing there's so many of them i i recorded a couple that i thought that we would oh find, wow like, that we would find interesting but you know then there's like age you know ones from china ones from japan okay 1054 and then it leads it, it it goes it speaks to something that is a little bit more um universal you know that it kind of goes beyond it goes <laughs> beyond nash nationality and <clears throat> 1054 so that's peter vision f-i-s-c-h-e-n he's a german bell founder and sculptor Oh, now, so that, just, nothing. This initials. book, yeah, yeah, ex exactly. They have nothing to do with initials, and you know the the way that these craftsmen positions were kind of like handed down. I mean, that could have been, you know, that could have been his father. He could have been an apprentice or somebody. That could have been his own thing. That I mean, you know, you know where these things designs come from. You know, no one really knows. Um, I don't know how you would know. I mean, I guess there's. I guess it was just... Uh, great. Excuse me. Grace might be the one to know. What, about what? what? <laughs> I, I missed the question. <laughs> you're, you're, I was making a, a comment, actually, um, that if one was to know, or one were to know, that perhaps you would be the one, <laughs> because you happen to be our researcher. Oh, and oh. such a great, a great one at that. We can crowdsource it. We can crowdsource it. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure somebody knows. I mean, you'd have to go to like that city and go to that, you know, right. that museum. And then there's the guy who knows that answer. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, you'd be surprised. You'd probably be fine. You could do some research and find it. But these things are pretty, I mean, having really not even heard of them. So they describe Michelangelo in this book as a uh, Italian painter, sculptor, architect, and poet, which I think is cute. And he made, he was kind of a, all the poetry I've read of Michelangelo is very satirical and, and actually very funny. Um, okay, so there's those. Um, let's just do, I mean, we're, we're not like, we're not really committing too heavily. So um, let's just sketch this one. And this is, just, this is, and this is the other thing that I loved about this one is that it, it's truly a warm up. There, it, there's no way that it can't be a warm up. All the, other warm -ups I choose, all the other warm-ups I choose, they wind up turning into three-hour fun. <laughs> and these, these can't do that. Oh, so I love fun. that. Are we using ink? Are we using uh, what medium? Oh, wow, that'd be cool. Yeah, well, I say we, I'd say we ink it. We ink it. Yeah, I mean, they're... That's the other interesting thing too. Like, are they, I don't know how, what their final form was. Uh, does that make sense? So this one, I don't know if this was a bas relief. Like, does it have, what is the, what is ultimately the, is it a stamp? Like, is it a stamp that you, you stamp it in like off ink and then stamp it in that way? Is it like, is it like you squirt wax on it and then you make the impression of it? You know, like what, or is it, you know, does it, does it depend on what you're doing? The symbol, you know, might appear in different ways. Man, this is crazy. And I don't even know where to start. Each one of the, um, each one of these marks has like a bow. Yeah. And like, you know, this is a foundry. Like, I wonder if this is made out of metal. Like, are the looks of the symbols have to do with, you know, the materials? Like, is this a gouge? You know how it's oh. the Yeah. Sometimes like horse nails, they used to do things with horse nails that are tapered on one end and yeah 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 
I mean, this one, I mean, they, I feel like these are probably, it feels like a gouge mark to me. You know, because each, if you think about a gouge up here, you know, if you, if you go thin, it makes a shallow triangle. And if the deeper you go, the wider, it's almost like you're drawing with triangles with, you know, with a V-shaped gouge. What is a gouge? I don't know what that is. So a gouge is like a piece of metal that you carve into wood or, um, or metal. It's like, uh, if, uh, if you look up here, Stace, it's a sharpened piece of metal that's usually in a V shape. So mm -hmm. this is really sharp here. And then it's attached to a piece of wood that is a handle. And then, you know, the handle's off screen, but you hold on to the handle and then it carves. <clears throat> And can I, can you use it as a verb as well? It gouges yeah. into. Yeah, to gouge. Okay. Some, yeah, okay. I, think so. I understand. What's a, what's a burr? A burr, like a burr on a plant. Isn't that one definition of a burr? Oh, I thought Sound you were asking to use it as a verb. Oh. A verb. oh. <laughs> All righty then. <laughs> okay. Well, well. Um, so this angle, this top, the angle of the four, you know, the, the hypotenuse of the four, I think that is, you know, it's upside down, but it has to be the same on both sides. Right? Yeah. It closes all these, um, and I'm wondering if the, the inside of the four actually passes through and becomes the end of the, the back end. See this little, I'm gonna use, I'm gonna keep the line there and make it imaginary. I don't, Cause it's not, it looks like it matches from this angle but it doesn't match from mm -hmm. this angle. It, it, it's really interesting. <clears throat> Harder than it looks. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah, so this inner part, it's widest at each end, you know, the, 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 the dominant diagonal, the only diagonal, well, not the, the, the essentially the, the vertical, wider, it gets thinnest in the middle and it winds out again. So you know, you're drawing, you're drawing an arrangement of marks that were created by a different tool. So you're kind of drawing the marks. Um, it reminds me of, um, you know, I mean, I guess that's part of the job of, of printmaking too, is that you make a drawing on a piece of wood and then you carve out your drawing. So even like the carvings are not, or the carvings are left over to mimic the lines. Mm -hmm. Ooh, if you, if you look up here, this might be the, this is a little uh, detail of a, of a bell foundry. So I think these are these uh, cauldrons, you know, these, uh, Plugs. and then he's got his final product here and this uh, must be a pulley system where he can move those um are they cauldrons what are they called when they it's like a big piece of stone that they heat up to melt the metal Ooh. i don't know i can't remember but I assume that's what the, I'm assuming that the, these are, those, these hinges, and then you pour into the molds. These probably are mold making materials up here. He's got a nice view. He looks like he's drawing at his table, or maybe he's, I don't know what he's doing at his table. Nice view of the city. Okay, so really quickly, 10.50, I'll put this back here. Oh. 
Thank you. <laughs> I was I was getting uh, nervous that that wouldn't occur. <laughs> but then then again, I know that wouldn't be the case because you never gave a two minute warning. So I'm always going to give the two minute warning when you're here. Oh, you. Thank goodness. It helps. I can use all the help I can get. <laughs> Thank you. This book really is so good. Hmm. I passed that. Okay, so that studio that we just saw was 1053. Sorry, I'll go right back. Tournay, T O U R N A Y. Oh no, that's wrong. 11. That's my fault. Wrong number. Bell Foundry by the, the, the piece is by Jost Amen. Okay, so it's just a generic Bell Foundry. Oh. So um, <clears throat> this was Fisher, P somebody P F P Fisher, the one that we're doing. Right? The one we're doing. Uh, what, num what number was it? 1054, I think. 1054, yeah. So I'll write that underneath here. Okay, P Peter. Yeah, Vischer, V I S C H E R, Vischer, Vischer. And that's from uh, 1455. He was 1455 to 1529. So this was like a, this is a Renaissance one. Okay, so here's some content here. So the Belf, the, the foundry picture that we just saw was entitled Vischer Blong. Special on Allier Lair stand. Anyway, so the artist that this represents is Peter Vischer. Kind of cool. Um, it was. It is definitely striking. I would. You know, in a sense, they're kind of logos. <clears throat> Can we try the Michelangelo one just for giggles? Yeah. Because he, um, there's also, and I, I really like the um, Anthony Van Dyke. This is really good, the A, V, D. <clears throat> and then this one, this is a no name, uh, Henry. So Henry de Bless. Henry de Bless did 1019 with the owl. I just wanted to draw that. It's so cute. So cute. Trevor, and did you, did, can we see uh, yours and the one that was just completed? That one? Oh, yeah. together? It doesn't awesome. have to be. It can just be yours. Are you finished? Are you yeah. good? Yeah, yeah, I'm done. Good. Thank you. You're welcome. You're so clumsy with my cutting. You're rough without right angles. The top of it is so interesting how it's got two thick sides and two thin sides. Two thick sides. The top sort of diamond piece. Yeah, it is not. Um, yeah, I know what you mean, Grace. So it's like. Everything symmetrical except that. Well, look at this one, the inside of this bow. You know, the inside of the pretzel is thicker. Yeah. So that's because inverted. The thick part. Do you think it's a think it's a flower blossom? 
Look at those. This is this reminds me of mine with the with the two crossbars in the vertical. Yeah, this is intimidating. It's like, and that's the other the other thing I really love about these is that they're they're simple enough because there's just not a lot of there's not a lot to them, um, but they're also immaculately designed. So many of them are so well designed on a, um, you know, and you think about how many, how, how, how these guys were, would want to be represented and how many different, how many different iterations they came, you know, that, that they, it's not, it's not like they just like, it just like fell out of their brain one day. Um, you know, they were, I feel like it was something that was really, you know, worked on for a long time. Yeah. So this is interesting, Grace, look at the, um, Look at the, I'm starting at the, I'm starting at the very middle here. And yeah. you know, if I start at the very center, this side feels like it's a curving bow. You know, the right side feels like it's a, you know, this teardrop shape. But then the left side, the curve doesn't begin until after this anchor. So if you look at like the dime, if you look at like that the thick diamond shape at the top, it has two parallel thick lines. Yeah. And then it has a thin connector. And then this is all three of those sides are straight. And then this fourth side is not. This is a this is the, the bottom of that is a curve. So they are um I'm thinking of the word like synonym, but it's not really a. You know what it reminds me of? It's like, it's like when, uh, you know, you head on 83 South and you have to turn right to get on 695 and you're really still on 83. And then you turn, you turn right and you like, you know, it's, you could either get off at Green Spring or you can keep going on 83 South. Yeah. It's like this little anchor here is that part of 695 that is also 83. Oh, so this is the 695 loop. And then this is, so they, I'm, what I'm saying is like they share, they're two separate things, but they're sharing yeah. the same. And one is, and it, one clearly belongs to the other, but they're the same road. So, you know, this line, dark line here, I think in my mind belongs to the diamond at the top. Hmm. But you, if you want to think about it, like the loop, it's not that it doesn't work. It's just not that it's just, it's not of its nature. Whereas, you know, 695, that, that part of 83 is clearly 695. It is not 83. Yeah. And then this feels like a stem to me. The central... And what is that form? You know, it's not really a triangle. It's not really a trapezoid. You get these curved sides. It's, it's curious. That to me looks like a horse snail, <clears throat> but I don't know what the name of that shape. Makes yeah. Me think of a trumpet a little bit. Yes. What is a trumpet form? I guess that is the probably the most the most useful, most common, the trumpet. Great one, Stace. Well, thank you. And then when we were doing it yesterday with the kids, you know, when you have, like I say, it's like, it's easy to do one trumpet shape. It's, you know, on one side, you know, but it's like, how are you gonna get the same trumpet shape on the other side? The exact same size. Yes. You know, that's the uh, that's the kind of the the skill the skill training component. And then, of course, if you were ambidextrous, that would be easier because you could do the the right side trumpet, and then you could switch hands, and then come and do the left side trumpet. 
and they'll have similar mechanics. <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? Uh, there, I mean, there are people that can do it. I had a friend who was, um, Ambidextrous. Was ambidextrous. He would draw at the same time, both hands at the same time. They were wow. symmet They were symmetric. They were, all, of, all the stuff he was drawing was symmetrical, so it's not like it was. Wow. I wonder if I'm. You know, my drawing's not perfect, but I'm. I, I don't think I'm missing anything. I mean, there is really a clear a curve on this right side loop where we are starting with a straight on the left side loop. And it is a nice transition from the base of each teardrop into the other side. And I was uh, thinking about the, I was just decoding our owl here. Um, and even though it looks like things are overlapping, none of them are. So you can do the little mound that he rests on. You can do the little inside of the, you know, the window frame. And then the way that the legs are, you can, you know, there's no thickness to those legs. They're just lines. So, you know, you could do the owl first and then do the background, or you could do the background and then do the owl legs. But I'm pretty sure this is how he was constructed. So we, we've moved along. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm just... Do you think um, these people did their own signets or was there, you know? Uh, yeah, like the signet, the signet shop? Yeah, because, you know, I'm sure a lot of noblemen had these signet rings because they were constantly sealing envelopes and letters and documents, but I doubt that they could design their own. That makes so much sense. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I would imagine I would imagine these artists did them themselves and then yeah. would then they would do them they would if anybody needed one any one of them like they wouldn't be their own blacksmith know, yeah the royal the, the the nobles nobles they would commission them probably yeah i bet yeah <laughs> Yeah. So what I'm, what I'm saying is like they like the like artists designed their own signets and then they would probably design signets for other people as a gig. I'd imagine. So you can imagine somebody coming to visit a nobleman with a portfolio of different designs, just like today, you know, an artist bringing design elements for you to choose from and then take it to the printer or the engraver. And totally. <laughs> Or have a line uh, of <laughs> artists presenting. But you know, it's a commitment because once you decide on your signet, it probably becomes your family symbol for generations. Yeah. Well, there are crests. There are family crests. Oh, which true. Is, um, yeah. Which are like a, a whole nother, whole nother thing. <laughs> <sighs> Sounds like something's on the roof. That's not good. We found out that the bee that I got stung by was most likely a European hornet and not a cicada killer. Oh my gosh. Well, I still think it's a cicada killer, but um, I looked at, I mean, I looked at it. I didn't, we don't have any of the bodies to actually, you know, 
look at it, but I have feeling in my toe now after two weeks. In your toe? You were stung in your toe? Stung in my big toe. Uh. Yeah. It was it was one quite it was one heck of a karmic payback. I'm not exactly, <laughs> I'm not exactly for sure what, but it was a wild, wild experience. I have to admit. I've never felt anything like it. Yeah, I stepped on a bee once, and I believe that was my only uh, bee sting. Yeah, I had not been stung by a bee in so many years, but it was not, it was not like the bee stings I remember when I was a kid. <clears throat> well, that's nice. Here's an initial. So this one down in the corner, uh, that's... <laughs> Jonathan Richardson, and there is in fact an R. Yeah, I see that. Um, and I wonder what that, are those grapes? They look, they look like grapes. I want yeah. them to be grapes so bad. It does a little <laughs> palette. And then I wonder what these sticks are. They don't look like brushes. It no, like they look like one. pasta, but I can't imagine it being pasta. <laughs> you can you imagine? Hey, if you put grapes, why not pasta? That's what I'm but thinking. I, you know. But there's a vertical piece there too. I was thinking that was a brush, but oh yeah. But I don't know. What's this thing up here? Is that a brush too? Look at these two marks at the bottom. I mean, it's very. Oh, careful. could that be the a stand that the easel is sitting on? I don't know. That's really odd. Or just odd that we can't make out the pieces and parts. I agree. I agree. Here's the other one. And then we should we should draw this one just because it's well, should we? My favorite one is the uh, is the Franz Halls. I feel like we should just try it. It's beautiful. It's only ten o'clock. Uh, may I see your your one we just finished? I never even knew we went on to the bird. Well, there was that or was the just, that, that was just my musing. Hold on, wait till it's in focus. Come on, autofocus. You can do it. Hmm. That's good. Why isn't it doing the focus? It's definitely not too close to. So full disclosure, I am using graphite because my black ink is skipping. It's like almost out of ink. And you'll see that easily on my first. Did you get the, it's in focus now, Stace, did you get it? I got it. Thank you. Oh, very good. Why not? Beautiful. Those of, you, those of you that move faster, we can have two of them. And they really kind of go nicely together. So these, I think these are just, um, you know, paint strokes. I like the foot. But oh it's so yes. <laughs> And look at Trevor's nose. Well, it was a nose. Trevor's nose? Where? Well, it, I thought it was a nose, but he took away the ball of the nose. Oh, yeah. By the way, I was drawing it? Yeah. Or that's what I was seeing. Uh-huh. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, yeah. But Grace, that is absolutely a foot. I mean, it is. It is. <laughs> yeah. 
reminds me of the Renaissance Festival. It looks like calligraphy. Yeah, and and cuneiform comes to mind. You know, the wedge-shaped writing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, those were some of the first signets. Um, yeah, I would think so, right? And they 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 are they are represented in this book too. We could look at those. But you know, it was a real necessity to have a signet. You know, anybody who was writing a letter needed a way to seal their letters. Yeah. Yeah, and then there's like the whole privacy factor. Exactly. I mean, that's something you can't even peek into a letter that has a wax seal. No, oh, but you can open it. I mean, you, you, you when know, you break it's... the wax seal, how would you open it? Maybe warm it up and peel it off? Yeah, maybe. Just tear the whole paper, the envelope. No, but, but then, then they'll it. know it was compromised. Not if they ever never get it. Oh, well, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Then there's no problem. <laughs> but if you're trying to intercept the message. Yeah, that's the key. Stacy. the key is that you intercept the I message. I know. You don't <laughs> give the enemy the intel that you know. I you know. Want, you don't want them to know that you know. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, yes. I think we read, we, we read too many medieval <laughs> novels. I'm waiting for my prince. There are known, there are known unknowns. And then there are unknown unknowns. There are known knowns. And then there's known unknowns. So this and one is really, like, really has wobbly edges. Unknowns. What's that? Yeah. This really has a lot of wobbly edges, which I guess comes from being from a made with a brush. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I think so. Um, let me, uh, do I have the Franz Hals here? That would be convenient. Oh, I didn't make the distance between the two uh, vertical lines uh, Pretty wide, wide enough. Yeah. And that really is what makes this so, Wonderful yeah. to me. Oh, I did the same thing. And stretch did you? It. Yeah. 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 Don't learn. All right, back. I think I have my pot in front of the halls here. And my, uh, it's interesting because my hand doesn't want to make that a foot. <laughs> <laughs> My inclination is simply to change it. Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> Yay. No? What? <laughs> oh God, it's not over my, I have it. something with a seal? He's using it open? everywhere. I had this flag for potentially a uh, Okay, so here's the guy. He, he did this portrait of uh, his wife, or this man and wife. Wow. And then if you look down, so he's got his name. And then down here, 1626. <laughs> and he's got this like, you know, faux thing. Yeah. And then, but look at this one. He signed it differently. Oh no, is it the same? Oh, I, it might be the same. Yeah. You mean then what we're is drawing? It, is it in, is it backwards? It's, it's HF. It's faint though. It's faint. No, it's the right way. It's the right way. We just don't see the the foot that clearly. Yeah. <laughs> but in the top, there's that notch that comes down. But there's an extension on the, hold on, there it goes. See how it looks like there's an yeah. F and then another F? Yeah. I wonder what Franz Hals's name is. 
Oh, let me see if there's another piece. That was like like the first page of the book. <clears throat> nice trony. This one is unsigned. There's the portrait. You can actually see it better. No, this one's not signed either. That's it signed in that shadow. So what's his name, Franz? Franz Halls. He's just like the great uh, Flemish portrait painter. Like um, that, look at these. That is interesting. That's this guy's family crest. He's got that shield with those three lily pads. Oh, it reminded me of like uh, uh, odd parts. And this, is, would... this is the uh, this is this lady, who she has her own family crest in that corner. She has four panels of uh, black and white geese. It looks like maybe <laughs> swan, black swans, white swans. Yeah, that that's awesome. That's... I just got, I just want to find like a clear. I mean, the first one had it for sure. You guys will love this piece. I just have to show this to you. This is, it, is, it was pieces like this that I fell in love with Franz Hals. So he would do, this is the term. Have you ever heard me talk about tronies? So yeah. Tron, yeah, trony, there's like portraits of people which are nameable, you know, like my niece Hazel. And then there are kind of like uh, stereotypes of people, like a chef or a police officer or a soldier. This is like a peasant boy. And, you know, so this isn't any nameable person, but it was just some cute kid that came in the studio and he painted them um, <laughs> having those like gnarly teeth. But we're left with, we do have his, um, and it's designed in a circle too, which is like so good. Um, yeah, these paintings, uh, he's known for his like virtuos, virtuoso, 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 like whatever, virtuoso brush strokes. Like he's just like, he's having such a good time. And each stroke, like he doesn't second guess himself. He's just really confident, really thick brush strokes that, um, you know, really capture the essence of a person. Um, you know, that kind of like that, almost like a photographic quality. Um, but yeah. So how, how do you know it's a turning? Um, or does the, it tell the, you in reading about the, it? The title is called Laughing Boy. So you're saying a trony is a generic, the generic thing term? Yeah, yeah, yes. So is like, that an official word or is that your word? No, no, that's a real word. Trony is <laughs> a real word. Um, I, might, I might even say it. <laughs> yes, it does, sound, it does sound like something I would make up. Um, <laughs> Yes, yeah. and that's how Van Gogh. Van Gogh did a bunch of his pieces. Like, if you look at the the old man, you know that we studied a couple of weeks ago. That was not a portrait of that man. That was a guy he had in the studio, and it was a generic model. And that was nothing more than a that was not that was nothing more than um, an anonymous person, which is in fact a trony. Yeah. Okay. And so there's so what I mean is that there's like there's a lot of liberties taken with proportions. So you don't have, it doesn't have to look like the person at all. In fact, you can embellish on all kinds of parts, all kinds of things. Carefully. Like you could make teeth boy a horse if you did maybe the teeth first. Yeah, no, I mean, I'm pretty sure he meant to, like he was, he was accentuating this poor child's pony yeah he gets away with it but the, the you do see you can see that there is the um they do he does have the signature or whatever the signet in the very faint faint quiet but it's there 
It is incredible how close this camera allows you to get. Maybe that's too close. There it goes. That's the right one, all right. He's one of my favorites. You know, sharpening this might be a good idea. All right, we are done with these. We're done? Well, no, got two minutes, please. It's okay. I'm finished. I'm finished. I'm my thing. Everyone else is um, as well. I should. The project today will require some um, inventiveness, some abstract inventiveness. Mm. I know. I get scared. Mm -hmm. Stacy, you love the abstract. I do. I do. I do. Mm. All right, so yes, drawing the gouges versus drawing the brush strokes. Different vibe. Still very fun. All right, you guys ready to check out the next one? Yeah. All right, I don't know how we're gonna be able to, I, I think I do know, but. Um, so a couple things. The, I do still wanna do the, um, that rock piece from last week, the Cotman. I think it's gonna be really exciting. Um, but I also wanna show you the drawing that launched this whole thing. So um, can we have a quick, can I see what everybody drew so far? I'm just gonna stop the share. Adele, I have you up. 
Not official. Um, well, that's a nice page. Nice. Yeah, <laughs> that's nice and still. Nice. Very nice. Very nice. What were you doing with your initials down there? Oh, your I, was, own? I was working on mine. <laughs> oh, good. Oh, I like the top one. Yeah, yeah, the top one, this one. Yeah, I like the top one and the bottom one. The bottom one looks a little bit like the AAA logo. Uh, oh, the yeah. Top, I, I, the top one is totally. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's the trends. That's the, you know, the, the progression. You know, you start with the simple and then yeah. you, start, you start pushing pieces around. Yeah. And that's how you get a little bit more, um, you know, dynamic. <laughs> I think you would mm -hmm. be able to actually get them made. I mean, if you had those designs, yeah. you could, like go to a trophy store or an engraver. I mean, they, there's, we have that. We have like, we yeah, have yeah. that. We have that for cheap. Yeah. So you, you know, you start with how you initial something, and I initial something with a, like a like that, you know, like that AAA yeah, yeah. kind of look with a line through it. That's how I initial, you know, like a document. So I started with that and then started stylizing it and now sort of moving things around. So it's, it's, it's fun. <laughs> that, that progress of, you know, what's not, what's perfectly natural and, and then formalizing it. Mm -hmm. That's, that's design. That's the process. Yeah. All right, Grace, let's see it. <clears throat> Oh, oh, so God. nice. I used ink. It was fun with ink. Yeah. You could really yeah. correct it with ink by thickening the line or whatever. Yeah. 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 I'm like sorry my, I couldn't do my the work. Name. Pencil first. Did you do pencil first? Oh, I did oh. it very light with an H just to get the straight lines. Absolutely. Yeah. And then I built on that with by thick, you know, by widening the line with the ink. Did you have to erase it or did you just let it sit? Uh, well, I started with a very faint H, you right, know, right. so thin. Yeah. Um, and then anything that stuck out, I did erase after the ink dried. Yeah. Excellent. All right, Stace, can I see yours? Yeah. Can I ask you a really quick question? Who did the H? The one we the just Prince did. Hulls? Prince Hulls, you said? Prince Hulls. Hulls. Yeah, and it's H A L S, I believe. I'm sorry, H A. It's F R A N S, and then H A L S, not H A L L, just one L. H A L S. H A L. Okay. All right. No, oh, I didn't do this right. I can't seem to. Uh, hold on one sec. I can't remove the pin. You're on there. I, I got you pinned. Oh, now I see I it. I see you. Uh, mm. Oh, nice. Thanks. Yeah, that's cool. So I started with the top one and ink and my ink just kind of, I threw it away. But it looks nice. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yours looks like it's like the four felt like, like really 3D. Mm. Oh, cool. Maybe, oh yeah, I, I don't know if you meant it. But... No. Okay, so I did want to do a little bit of uh, a little bit of research. So let's just have a quick glance at some specific uh, some specific Cotman's market. And there's that page. I was I was really I was really toiling. And we might who knows? We'll see what happens. Um, Trying to figure out what I'm to do. We'll just stick with what we know. Okay, that's it. All right, so let's go over here. So I'm just going to quick do a little, like a quick reminder of what some of his landscapes look like, and then I want to <clears throat> I want to show you my drawing, and I have a couple hunches 
of um, screen share. Advanced second camera. I have like a hunch about where you know the location of my drawing might actually have been. And then the other thing is, is that the drawing came from a collection, which might be kind of, uh, it is a whole nother rabbit hole to go down, but we won't do that today. So I really do want to start drawing. Come on. Oh, I love this one. I love this one. Oh. So there's this one on the left, which is really, I love, yeah. I mean, I, I, mean, I, I love it too. I, I mean, I've been really loving this one. And then there's the three trees one. I have to zoom up even further for these guys to fit on the screen just with the height. Um, this is unfortunate because this is actually, this page, believe it or not, um, really describes nicely the, like the color ranges that his paintings, you know, were, were able to have. I mean, look how cool, I mean, these are full color prints and look how like blue i mean it's essentially blue um and these the the damage from like the printing or the the binding is unfortunate um because of how he layers these trees um and then this was the three tree one i don't know if you remember that one where it's like the light tree uh, medium tree and then the dark tree but they're all light against that dark background um yeah i'm having difficulty reading the images maybe it's just how it's transferring yeah they're really so subtle too i don't i okay. I, I agree i mean it's i mean they're beautiful i, I you know i can see the beauty in them maybe yeah, no. it's just the subtlety that's supposed to be and i'm looking for something that's not there because they are beautiful i don't know i i think it's we're, it's we're, it's kind of far away okay then there's this one which is <clears throat> Let me try to zoom in a little bit on this one. This one is uh, the cover piece. <clears throat> this is the one that I think relates relates most to um, my painting. And actually, let's see if I can do this or my drawing. All right, so can you see how... Um, There's like these these dark tree trunks. There's these dark tree trunks, and then you have this like dark foliage, and then you have this you know angled tree that like really falls off to the side, and then that is a light tree up against a dark background down here, and then it's a light tr or dark tree up against the light sky. You know those white clouds. Um, there's this other tree which is you know, silhouetted. Um, it is a black background with a light tree. And then the tree kind of comes up and it's just a faint yellow, like it's a faint color mm -hmm. change that distinguishes it. Um, you know, we're going back in space here. So there's like, the, I would say these are three kind of tree clusters. This is all one element. So there's like this tree cluster, this tree cluster, that tree cluster. And then if you look, it's right, the whole scene is set on a little pond. So, you know, again, Cotman loves these reflections. So you know, this cluster reads, you know, this cluster reads, you know, softened, less detailed. Um, but we're, you know, once you see a little bit of the landscape that's going on, then you can kind of see the reflection that's in the water. You know, these rocks are above water. <clears throat> There's this little um, rock ledge, which is kind of interesting. It looks like it's, you know, exposed stone. <clears throat> then it takes us back in space down here. You kind of go through this framework. If I zoom in. Because um, his details are, you know, really spectacular. I mean, look how, look how nice all um, of them. Yeah. Um, the watercolors are. But yeah, very, yeah. very abstract. I mean, incredibly abstract. Look at that little, do you see the little white stream? That's yeah, yeah. And it's pouring in and then there's this like kind of staircase you know this little jagged staircase that comes in it looks like there's a almost like a lagoon or like a you know a, i don't know there's a there's a there's a cavern back there and 
Wow, these are really. So here's our, here are the this cluster of trees again. I just wanted to show this because my drawing has trees. It has a, a small pond and it's got some like, you know, you know, some elements that are hard to read. And, you know, this book that I, that I have doesn't have a whole lot of drawings in it. Um, so it's hard to tell what he was thinking. And I'm just trying to get into his head. I love this, like, uh, look at this vertical, this dominant vertical that runs through the whole center. And then this gesture that runs through there. That's really, that's really nice. It makes, it reminds me of his waves that he, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, with like the, the waves and the storm and whatnot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, just a just a really well, just a a a, a, a big elaborate arrangement of uh, light trunks against dark trunks, dark trunks against light backgrounds. You know, to organize all of those things to keep them all separated. You know, enormous amounts of control. And probably planning, and that's what I'm hoping for. I'm, I'm just I'm just going through some of these paintings so I can, so we can see kind of like what final characteristics look like. Oh, look, there's a bridge back there. Oh yeah. And he doesn't have a whole lot of. Uh, he doesn't put a lot of people in his pictures, but if my if my drawing has people in it, it would be really nice. Okay, so let's, do you guys want to see the piece? Yes. See the piece. <clears throat> oh my gosh mm. wow i want to make sure there's i want to minimize these reflections okay. oh i was going to ask if you could go back i don't think we can see all of it yeah just want to get uh Still more, huh? Nice. Yeah. Still more. Yeah. <clears throat> Are those people? That's, the the, that's, what, that, that's what I'm trying to do. That's what I would like. Let's let's look at the whole thing and then we can then I'll can pop it off the uh I'll pop it off the, the frame and we will <laughs> not the frame, but pop it off the stand. Those these are just magnificent. I think they might. They so, might be. <laughs> and like, you know how he likes the hierarchy? I mean, this is clearly the most dominant tree because it's the, you know, the highest contrast. This, this feels like rocks to me, but it, remember when we did the, remember when we did the Mie? And we had like the, there was like the bales of hay, those big bales of hay. I was wondering if that's what this is. Could this be um, like a man-made structure? Is that a tower? Wow, I want to pop this up. I think that's a clock tower. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> I thought they were all rocks, but. Oh, so did, so did I. That does look like a tower in the distance. Yeah, it does. I thought they were all rocks too. So yeah, so here we go. Like, what? Who is this guy? He has ears. That's what I'm <laughs> seeing. <laughs> like I see. Oh, what? Uh, and now the old men bent over with hair, spiky hair sticking out, and he's looking down. I'm sure that's not what it is. I thought it was that someone holding a teddy bear. And his horse in the background. The horse. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> I don't see the horse. I don't see the horse either. You see, hey, where the, is the, you're looking at his face. The yeah. face and the ears. <clears throat> and then the body of the horse is behind it, but you see the tail kind of on the Oh, side. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. So funny. I oh see God. nothing. I can't see anything you're seeing. I'm like, I'm trying to associate. 
an object with this. I mean, look at, I love that it's got the Cotman reflections, you know, the water in the foreground. It's got the Cotman cluster of trees. And this tree on the side, I love, you know, this tree angled off to the side, this little, this little guy on the left. I like that it's got a light side and a shadow side and that, you know, very generic tree, but like, what? I do not, so, okay, so th let's just talk about this for one second. I'm sorry for shaking so much. What is, it's gonna get in focus in one second. There it goes. What is this? In your mind, what do you think that is? A teddy bear being held. <laughs> I know it's not. I know it's not. People, or you think that's a horse head? Yeah. What's the, like? What is that up there? Like Adele, when you were describing it, what were what were you actually talking about? Well, the that is the horse's head, but where but he didn't draw in the facial features. Okay. So it's kind of the outline of the horse's head, and he's looking for at you like this. And you see his, you know, and his, you see the rest of his body is sort of being, you know, in line with it behind it. Right. And then, so is he, that, and then what is this? this? <laughs> That's Grace's man like, leaning over. <laughs> over. Old man with <laughs> I, yeah. bald head with a nose pointing down. Do you see that? <laughs> Spiky hair. <laughs> Spiky hair. That's the guy and, That's the guy bending over. And I see eyes and nose and everything. <laughs> and I see the horse's head looking away from us. So we only see the oh. back of the head and it's, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it's tail, like it's, it's butt yeah. is, is higher, just a little bit. Yeah. Yes, that is makes there, sense. Is the dark smudge a rider? Rider. A rider. Uh, Right. But but why would it have those ears or horns or I <laughs> I don't, I don't know. Know. I think, it's so maybe the old man fell off. So frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> and under the horse it's is like the a buttocks. Like their buttocks. <laughs> yes. I remember not... figure this out. I don't know if I'm gonna figure it out. <laughs> I take it you don't like any of our ideas. I don't see them. <laughs> I, I, well, what what did you see that, when you're, you put that in? Not, it's all equally not helpful. I, I just don't see it. I <laughs> wish I could see what you're seeing. I'm like, you have like eyes, eyes, eyes nose, is that like a cow? Sideways, right? Side we, we can barely see it ourselves, really. So maybe he's lifting the horse's leg and checking the bottom of his foot, you oh, know. Oh, no, that's no. A... I can kind of see that. Or riding side saddle, saddle and he's falling off. <laughs> yeah, I can kind of see that. But once, I feel like once I see it, it's going to be like, everything's going to be fine. Because there's nothing like, I mean, it's got to be something. There's like... Look at all of those lines, all of those marks. They're all intentional. Well, but it, what do you see it as? I swear to God, I have no idea. I think we just have to draw it. Oh. Like, I, I think I think I might <laughs> get it. I might get it if I draw it. I'm just looking at it. I've never been as perplexed. I've never been perplexed like this. I'm always able to tell what things are. So the bottom line, the earth, is uninterrupted. It goes through it, right? But it could be the top, you know, the tops of grasses, you know, like. Uh, so. you know, like it was like an old gnarly tree stump. Ah, like, that could might be. Could that be a thing? I don't see that thing. Because uh, yeah, now I. I, I like, like you know, the dog peeing on the old man's. Like, <laughs> like, let's think. I don't see that either. Something. I don't. I don't see that. Oh, but look above! Oh my gosh, it's the the the, the, the uh, what do you call the side view? It's the side view of a person from the Renaissance fair with a beard and the hat and the nose and the eye and the mouth. 
Oh my gosh, do you see that? No. Is it his the whole body or just part it's of the it? It's the keep all right, go up slowly. Straight up. Up here? Up. Yes. Oh yes. Oh, oh, up there, yeah. And a collar. Do you see the collar? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Are you know just, what's kind of interesting? I, I think you're yeah, I think you're I don't know how I don't know if you're right, but I have to it's, tell you I found I found another one. It's another, hidden pictures. <laughs> I found a hidden picture in the popular one. Hold on, let me find it. <clears throat> Who knows? Maybe he did do stuff like that. Yeah, no, I think he I think he did. Think, let me show you this thing. It's crazy. But we just want to think that he did because we can't define <laughs> certain images. If he does it, and it's actually from the same angle too, which might not make it credible. Do you see that the angry witch face? Yes. Yep. With, with one tooth. No. Tooth. Yeah, with well, the, mouth, the brow ridge. And a big wart on the nose. Big wart on the nose. Yes. Yeah. The yes. Mouth, the tooth and the chin. And, and the eye looks like a turtle. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he did that intentionally. <laughs> no. I mean, once you see that scary face, it's hard to yeah. un unsee yeah. it. It's like a troll. It would be like the troll under the bridge or something. Yeah. You know, it's like looking but at clouds, you know, you can see shapes in clouds. And I know. Yeah. I know. I think that's the kind of thing. There was one lady that came into the school and she was like, she said that she saw faces everywhere in nature and she would like take pictures of all these, like, she's like, they're there, it's there. I'm like, yeah, I know it's kind of there. I mean, but yeah, you can, <laughs> you can see them everywhere. I mean, it's just like, you, yeah. yes, you, got an, you have an imagination. I don't think you can publish a book about that. Uh, uh, no, I can't unsee it anymore. <laughs> you ruined the picture for me. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I hope not. Yeah. Now, is it possible that this is a structure like a, in the distance with a bush or something in front? With it's ears. Not, not a straight structure, but. <laughs> no, but then what I don't understand is why is it dark? I mean, it's the area, it's zone one. This piece has almost no white chalk highlights except for there. There, he adds white chalk highlights. Oh, really? Area of a highest contrast. This is the moment of focus. Yeah, and, we have to figure this out. And I, I thought maybe it was a horse <clears throat> carriage, but you know, like I was thinking, this was a wheel on that side, and that's the back of the carriage, and there's a guy sitting, and it's from behind. You know, it's like you're seeing him riding oh, away. Oh, oh, a horse-drawn carriage. Hmm. So to, to go on a, another tangent for a moment, yeah. if you go straight down from this unknown item and to the right, is that a swimming rabbit? <laughs> Does anyone see that? This thing? Yeah. <laughs> now that you mentioned it, yes. But <laughs> I mean, it, it clearly is a swimming rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hold on. There's some white chalk highlights as well on this um, on this entryway. You see that? I just saw a breast. <laughs> Does this piece have a name? No. Yeah. That's what I'd like to figure out too. So, actually, Grace, as I cut the back of this, or somebody, let me show this to you. So this is yeah, and the, the, let's look at his signature because you know it's it it is. Not, I mean, this is as clear of a signature as you're going to get. Um, and it, this is his, you know, this is his. It's J.S. Cotman, which is, like, you know, like I said, him and his son were working on pieces. And, you know, this drawing is, this drawing is, this drawing is the real deal. I mean, he's, I mean, the skill of this is incredible. I mean, the mark making and the way that, he goes back into space. I mean, there's just like, it's just got everything. It's got everything that you would want, um, you know, in these, in these kind of like Cotman-esque um, thinking, but yeah. You know, anyway. Being a horse-drawn carriage possibly 
loaded up with something in the back. Like the horse. all with saddlebags, one on each side. Yeah, and we, that's how I'm seeing we're not it. Seeing, we're not seeing the wheels of the carriage, but now my old oh, man yeah. has a horse. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> it needs a wheels. Well, what about that here? I was yeah. seeing that as the other side of the, um, the horse, the, the saddlebag. Yeah. But it was a tail a moment ago. Yeah. And this is a pretty big drawing. I mean, that's my pencil. I mean, it's a nice pad. Nice pad size. Um, all right. So let's look at the back. And then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pop this thing open to see if there's any more information we can get. Um, it's going to be a really exciting thing. OK, so um, that's what I need research on. And I have found it. Um, this came from the Bellingham uh, Smith collection. Come on. There it goes. It's in focus. Bellingham Smith collection. And I think it's a family of uh, illustrators. <clears throat> All right, people, this is going to be good. I, I wonder when it was reframed. So these are chalk. There's white chalk, um, but not much. Oh, I found this one. Cotman English landscape, black chalk on paper. Wait, you found the actual drawing? I I found it for sale, you know, Alex Cooper thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's in the frame. That's this one. That's this one. Oh, okay. That's where I bought it. All right. If they say anything about it. Oh, yeah, it looks exactly like this one. You're right. <clears throat> you know who the Cotman, the uh, Bellingham Smith people are? No. Did anything, nothing came up? Bellingham Smith collection, it's all it says. Bellingham Smith artist, is the other one? I did find stuff on them, but I didn't, I haven't been able to go down the rabbit hole yet. All right, it does have a name, it does have a title, I think. All right, this is good, people. Come down here. This is what we've revealed. The title is The Shepherd and the Shepherdess. What? <laughs> and then is it what's is that Ash Moline Museum? Ash Moline, A S H M U L E A N, right? So it looks like. Shepherd. Shepherd and the Shepherdess. I wonder if that becomes a painting by Cotman. <clears throat> Ash Moline um, Museum. <clears throat> where's that? It looks like it might be in Oxford. 
University of Oxford. Oh, I don't know. This is a really nice, this is a good frame job, actually. But it sure doesn't look like a shepherd and shepherdess. Oh. Yeah, it's an Oxford. It's a shepherdess. I wonder if any of that's like a dress. And then I also wonder if there's a painting. Let me look up the painting. Okay, I'm muting myself because they're working in the street behind me. Mm. Okay. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> so that might be okay okay we're getting a little bit closer the shepherd and the shepherdess images John Silk Cotton and the shepherd there might be a dog in there. All right, so here's the Cotman. All right, let me go. <clears throat> So there's gotta be a dog. All right, so that's the, sh that's, that's, this is Cotman's shepherd. So this is the same artist, still not seeing it. All right, let me go back. And then this is not Cotman, but it's a, it's a shepherdess. So it's just a woman with a dress holding a sheep. So I'm wondering if this, that's a sheep. Oh. Hmm. So is there a shepherd somewhere in that drawing? That's what I was looking for. So if this is a shepherdess with her head in her dress and a sheep, and I remember if there's a baby sheep and then is there another guy that we're not seeing? Right. Like I was maybe standing. And I wonder if there's other sheep. So weird. I don't see all these shepherds, shepherd, shepherdesses, all have staffs. Like there's the shepherd's staff. Mm -hmm. Look at her. Ooh. The shepherdess spied upon the landscape. This one's got a uh, a fella 
on the other side of the tree approaching her, but she's got the lamb and the staff. I have another interpretation. What if we're looking at the, the horse-drawn carriage, but we're looking at it from the front? So the what looks like the bending over man is the, actually the horse. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, and the carriage is in the back with whatever, and maybe the dark blob on the carriage is the person, the driver. So that curve around the dark um, body is the haunch, the back haunch of the horse. Mm -hmm. You know, if you look carefully, there is also a horizontal line along the side of the dark mass, which might be the leather. Yeah, that what you're drawing right now would be the horse scene you know, sort of three quarters view from the front. Right. But the shape is odd, isn't it? The shape of a head doesn't feel horse-like. Yes. And the black mass Behind might be the driver sitting on the wagon. Yes. Yeah. That's, a, that's that's where I was going with it. And mm desperate to find this this felt this this got me excited up here when i was showing like the shoulder and then her back leading into the elbow then into the waist and then i was thinking that this here would be like that puffy the puffy shepherdess dress and then the bustle. yeah the bustle and if that was the case then this would be the front of her face but then the back of her neck, then the head just like disappears, which I think it would be weird. And then if that's the body, and there's this tone, and then there's this little like kind of mushroom shape, which is curious. <coughs> Wonder what that is. And then there's this, you know, this kind of trapezoidal form that seemingly has like a nose and two eyes like almost like in a you know not human and then this whole sea this undercarriage of the sea you know like this like it almost looks like the apple core 
that you're kind of like looking into something. And then it's on, then you get this, and then there's like this base on the ground. There's the land. And that tree that's on the side. So this is a tall tree. There's just, there's just not a single aspect that is a dent that, that you can, that you can clearly name. You know, it's yeah. so abstract. It feels, it feels otherworldly. Now, if I draw it again, like, like, you know, I think initially, you know, this S curve and then this little attachment up here is like a horse's head. And I could see that, you know, that was, but then that head feels so big, you know, and then maybe, you know, this would be like the main, and then you'd see a lost profile of the head. but then nothing else makes sense like this would be the the back and this would be the tail of the horse but then there's no legs yeah so that i mean that that expires it expires so fast and it's just so uncharacteristic because if you look at every other mark in the entire piece you know you can you can almost feel him naming the things the rock and the grass and the and the, the sandbar and then the edge of the stream and the reflection you know yes it looks like a bunny rabbit but like you know i it's it's like it's based it's based on an observation and if it's and the title of the piece is shepherd and shepherdess which is really exciting that we actually found that and then i mean the, i haven't taken the backing off there might be sketches on the back of the actual paper too uh, there's like another layer of maybe uh, he used that maybe he used that for a different piece so you have the original piece yeah this is my drawing this is my i the whole reason i got into Cotman was because i looked i looked it was alex cooper and i saw this drawing and i was like that is a freaking good drawing. <laughs> I was like, that's a really nice drawing. I don't know who did it. I have no idea who Gottman is, but like this guy seems like he knows his knows. I mean, I was like, that's a a competent drawing by a, a like a real deal artist. And you know, there's so much crap at that place. You know, there's so much art that comes through there. But I, but so on a on a hunch, I was like, I'm gonna bid, I was like, I'm gonna bid hundred dollars or 120 bucks or something and you know it didn't go over that and so i got it and then that's what like spurred this whole thing so it's interesting you can see these like see these little orange marks in here this is foxing you know those little orange speckles like from like mold or whatever oh yeah so, oh yeah you know, drawings from from what, I would be, from what i can tell it's from like 1809 so that's pretty i mean that's an old drawing you know it's 200 years old <clears throat> and then there's no other you know if, well i can zoom out here there's no looks like there's some other um looks like there's some other museum content hold on actually i should turn it sideways but this says e and it ripped when i pulled the thing off it ripped but it is um i got it i mean i should look in to that so i wonder how it sold what was that museum again ash ash molian um i it, i found it and it has 225 cotman pieces oh yeah. shit um and a lot of them like maybe 150 of them i actually have pictures of because i searched in their in their um website but then the rest of them, there's no image available. So I was hoping to find this one, but yeah, I guess they don't have it if you have. <laughs> right, right. Well, and then Bellingham Smith, these people were um, artists, I guess, British yes. artists, it's like a family of artists. There's a woman, um, so, I think she's like the daughter of the guy who made 
the fortune or whatever. So she, that's another lead. Okay, if you guys bear with me, I will um, I will pop this out. That's, we're not getting answers we need. Got those in there, didn't And I wonder how they even got it. Yeah, I wonder how, like, I wonder, I mean, I heard the BMA is selling a lot of paintings. So I guess eventually these museums need money and then the, the paintings go back into private hands. I'm gonna have to get this thing reframed. So the Ashmolean Museum is having an event on Friday the 15th, that's tomorrow, 20, and 22nd and 29th, October 2 to 3, exploring John Sell Cotman, John Martin, and Samuel Part Palmer's work. <laughs> no way. That's yeah. hilarious. So it's a virtual event. You can join them online. Wow. That's spectacular. That's tomorrow? Yeah. What time? Uh, what time? Well, it? it's, uh, I guess it's London or Oxford. Yeah, this is in Oxford, London. 2 to 3 p.m. there. Is it, five is, is it what, a five hour difference, Adele? In England? Yeah. yeah. Five. If they're ahead five, it would start here at 8 p.m. Something like that. Yeah, it sounds about right. Where do you see that? Uh, where do I see that? I went to ashmoleanmuseum.org uh -huh. and looked at their events. I don't know how I got there, honestly, but I was started on Ashmolean. Online events, okay. Yeah. This is always the most dangerous part is taking these rusty metal wires off yeah 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 so after a decade devoted to printmaking cotman returned to painting only to meet with further disappointment and self-doubt uncertain whether to court the crowds in the exhibition rooms or to find solace by burying himself in nature Cotman's daring technical experiments are a reflection of his wavering, restless personality. Yeah, all of the quotes that I found, many of the quotes, he's always like in despair. He's like always lamenting being an artist. So hmm. All right. Good party, people. Oh, so it's 21 
pound sterling, and it's three dates, and it's full. <laughs> oh. The the session is full. Yeah, I wonder why they why it would be full. You know. Okay. It's, a short, it's a short course, um, one hour each day, 15th, 22nd, and 29th of October. So I don't know if they were going to uh, uh, focus on one um, one painter per day. Oh, impossible. Aha. Uh -huh. We got the frame off. I got the frame off. Anything? Anything? I don't see anything. <laughs> Nothing. Well, uh, let's look. Let's look. I have to turn this upside down. A really nice, you know, quality um, frame job. I think it's the museum who that framed it, or yeah, for sure. This is the back of it, and there is the nothing there. It's just blank. But so, where did it say "Shepherd and Shepherdess" on the back of the outer frame? Mm. Yes, correct. So let's see. So let's... The frame was used for something else, you think? Yeah. Yeah, this is how it's matted. Yeah. And then it's like marked on the inside and it's taped down by a flap. And this is the. It's actually, this is actually kind of interesting. This is the inside of the mat. This is all hand drawn. So this is probably belong to something else, too. Mm hmm. Or maybe they screwed it up. They could have screwed it up. So this is the description was on the back of the mat. Mat. Okay. So that was possibly used for something else. Shepherd and the shepherdess. Mm -hmm. Interesting. It. Well, I don't know. I don't think so. Is this it's on the backing which is uh which is this drawing the front i think was reused yeah so let's look at it without the mat on there Make it straight and then not get the lights. So the orange line along the top is from the mat, not part of the drawing. It goes over the name on the bottom. You know, the shepherd and the shepherdess. I wonder if that's just like it's a random name. Well, he, Cotman did do a shepherd and shepherdess. What's that? Cotman did do a shepherd and shepherdess painting, right? He did. I, he we did that? I found the shepherd. I didn't find the shepherd and shepherdess. Oh, okay. Yeah, I just searched on that and I got a whole bunch of different things. Yeah. On Cotman or on just other? Uh, I. It, you know how what happened here i started with cotman but it doesn't uh it went off cotman <laughs> yeah yeah it went off cotman pretty quick
But having a title is pretty good. You know, when we didn't have one before. Like it was definitely worth taking it out of the frame. Right. What I'll probably do is get a keep this mat and get another mat cut so that you know the like whenever anything turns yellow like this it's because there's a little bit of acid in there and uh, yeah. is really careful about keeping mats acid free so right, they, right. So they don't stain the drawings or what have you yeah. Uh, They'll probably get another one, but I, I like this mat so much because it's got the the gold and yeah. the nice. water trim. Um, and it's from the museum and it has the you know the provenance, like it has the title of it. So I'll keep all of that stuff. I just think it needs some it needs some spacers. It needs a spacer in between this mat and the drawing. Mm -hmm. Person's gonna kill me. Um, do you guys want to try and draw this tree? Yeah, let's do a little drawing. That can't go. Oh, I guess I can. Hold on. Let me see if I pick up that. I love this little tree on the side so much. We can get half, we can sketch half of this thing. Um, now, can you all see this well enough? Yes. I'm taking it, I took a picture of it so I would have it. I have some uh, paper that has a rough side. Um, do you think that the rough side would be good for this tree to give some texture or? Um, I do. Okay. I do, I'll play that up a little bit. 
So try to grab that texture and see what it feels like. Oh. All right, so I'm gonna, um, I think it would be easier, right, if I um, emailed this to you? Okay. I, I got it from the website and uh, so I have it on my phone here. Okay. Which website? Uh, oh, actually, Adele, I'll just send this picture to you. Okay. <laughs> you can so get. Just emailed you the high resolution image. Oh, good. Yes, photograph. So I will text it to you as well if that makes it. You're going to be able to like really get into it. Um, Email is fine for me. Yep. And I, I already emailed it. It just it takes a little longer. Okay, we got. I've got it. <clears throat> yes. Thank you. Sure. I'm definitely seeing a horse and carriage now. <laughs> like go, like walk, like riding away from us. Uh, I see it coming towards us. So is, is it is the dark tree a tree and then the white trunk to the left of it another tree or is it part of it yeah i think this is a second tree This is our our little character, and I think it's I think for as strange as it is, um, I think he does anchor the picture around it. <clears throat> um, all right, so I, I don't. I mean, that, that's the other thing. It's like, does he anchor the picture around the, you know, the tree arrangement, which is clearly this dominant vertical here, or the dominant horizontal, which is, you know, this axis point where the, the shepherd and the shepherdess rest, or the horse and carriage rest. You know, I'm not quite sure. So I'm going to, um, there's this little frame that's around uh, our subject. And there's a little hillside on top. And then there's some, uh, you know, distant trees on the left. And um, those are actually really kind of fascinating too. Like the way his line work hierarchy is able to go. I mean, look at how this tree on the left is, you know, lighter, but then this is lighter still. Like the, this, you know, he really controls the depth of these trees based on line weight, you know, exceptionally well. So I'm kind of anticipating that. Um, but there's no doubt that the highest contrast in the whole picture, you know, is this human element. And I think it is a human element. You know, it's not a, just a horse. It's not just a cow in a field, which does give scale in a similar way as, you know, humans do. Um, but, you know, this, this human component um, has the most amount of chalk and the most densest solid dark object um you know throughout the entire picture let's just like pull this back i mean it's just it's clear as day now the, the the tree branch does go dark but there's no white chalk highlights and there's no solid masses that even compare um to that tree so <clears throat> i'm trying to do this little i love this little uh this little zigzag 
of, uh, of like contour, of tree line contour. And then that is, you know, quickly cropped off by a next, uh, you know, tree line contour. And you could call them the same, um, but he distinctly separates them through uh, the tonality. So this mass, this is gonna, <clears throat> the, the mass I just drew, that second mass, um, that's gonna bring us um, up into the edge of the, the, the light tree that Grace was talking about. The, the, it is a light tree with dark silhouettes, um, which is kind of the companion tree to the one that's in highest contrast, which is the, um, the black tree, the dark tree. And the dark tree is thicker. So that, you know, that moment of contrast, and I, it's so interesting um, how, you know, how like even like my approach to this drawing, I'm, I'm sort of lost in a way. I haven't, you know, anchored myself. Um, because I'm finding the relationship between the two main subjects, the human element, <clears throat> which almost just puts it into a genre, like, like that, you know, pastoral genre scene. And then what his true interest is, which is the, the trees, you know, the trees and the foliage, um, that's his passion, like that's the nature. And, um, you know, there is this 90 degree angle between the tree and the landscape you know, where the, where the human element exists. Um, I went from the human element up the, uh, you know, through the you know, this vertical component, which is a, a, a lesser important tree. Um, so if I can see this little frame that's created by the, the main tree, which is the right side of the rectangle, the ground plane, which is the bottom of the rectangle, the left side of the rectangle, which is the vertical element and the tree, and then finally, you know, the, the base of this larger plumage of tree, um, which is the top of that rectangle. You know, this is some super advanced design stuff going on here. Um, and, you know, the fact that he makes it feel so natural and so simple, um, you know, and unassuming is just, you know, the mark of a, of a true master. And you know, the, the, that satisfying rectangle that you can see right here, um, you know, this little, I'm just going to generically put in, you know, some dark notes, <clears throat> you know, in this kind of abstract way. And I think we may come to find out what this, what this actually is. Um, you know, the more we work on it and the more we get inside of his design sense. So there are two, um, there's a horizontal line that goes um, on the, on the far side of our human element. And then there's one that is, um, you know, conjunct, meaning it's, it's actually the contact point that the human element has with the ground. <clears throat> and that is the same mark as the base of the small tree. That was like this miniature, the miniature frame, the original rectangle that the, uh, the human element lived inside of. So I think we're going to get a bunch of concentric frames. Um, so that line passages, you know, this line that's on the far side of the human element passages on the other side of that tree. And then that's gonna lead us into, in the same way that these trees get layered, like one, two, and then the trunk, um, there's the, the lower component, which looks like it's shrubs, but they, you know, they could be part of the same tree. They function in the same way. Um, on the other side of this little tree that we did, there's a, uh, a layer of shrubs. And then there's a darker layer of shrubs. And then that brings us into um, where, the, you know, where the trees kind of join. Um, you know, I think, Grace, if you're looking at it, I think it's, you know, you know two trees that grow right next to one another. Yeah, yes. Yeah. And their branches are interchanging. I saw at the top. They're, yeah. they're going into each other. It's very pretty. Oh. And the other thing that I just realized too, um, I don't think that this, the gap between the, uh, this dark line is actually the tree. I think it might be the gap between the trees. I think it's a negative space. Because yeah. if you come to the, to the roots, you know, to the yeah. trunk, 
um, you can see that there is a big thick trunk and then a thinner trunk on the left side. And then as you go up, you know, the two trunks split and you start to see the space between. Also no, I don't, I don't, I don't really buy that Trevor, because if you, if you follow up the dark, it branches up vertically. Yeah, it. right there. <clears throat> yeah. Ooh. It's hard to imagine that as the gap further up. Yes, you're right. Oh. Yes. Imagine it's one big tree that mm -hmm. has a um, that has a, a, a you know a, a hole in it, like a big. Uh, you know. Well, you know, I imagine this dark tree like an umbrella pine. Mm -hmm. Um. But may, may, maybe it isn't. But that's the way I view it. Okay, so the, the, the two, the two. What you're saying. So what I thought was the side of the tree, that's actually the side of the bale. Yeah. We'll just call this the. We call it a hay bale. I don't know. For the for the time being, we we'll call it the hay bale. And that's the side of a cube here, and then it pyramids up this way. One, two. Wow. Okay. Great. Great. So so interesting. So there, uh, so these, tr so these two trunks join, huh? The black trunk and the white trunk join. Unless it's the, unless the light on either side is actually not a trunk either. It's just one tree, one dark tree. <clears throat> um, if you follow the vertical up, um, that from the, the human element it cuts across it pretty sharp. And as that cuts across right above that is where the dark tree, uh, splits into, uh, two boughs, or maybe it's just a continued trunk. So it goes to what it goes, um, you know, roots, trunk, boughs, branches, twigs, leaves. So I guess I think you might still consider this the trunk. And I think trunks can have, you know, single moments and then I think trunks can split. I guess maybe if it splits, that's really, you know, these two kind of like structural boughs. And then these would be branches. And in a, in a very Mie kind of style, he does do the, you know, left side, right side, left side, right side. Yeah, it makes like a, um, this empty space um, between the two black branches. The branches feel like they create sort of a, um, Almost like a pitch pitchfork kind of feel. <clears throat> and I'm kind of gravitating towards plotting the branches, you know, the visible branches. And then we'll see if we can locate some of these clusters. Defining all of these, uh, the, you know, the various plumages. <clears throat> so, in one sense, um, can you, do you guys see this large sort of shark tooth kind of look? So, everything to the left of, you know, the pitchfork. You know, there's these kind of rec there's like kind of that rectangular cluster above the. You know, the carriage and then there's this large triangular structure um and i and whether he saw that um you know like the whole cauliflower kind of feel i think it's important to try to see the whole and then subdivide it 
So if I was to overly simplify it, I'm seeing this large triangle on that side. And then I'm seeing, um, you know, almost like a smaller triangle on the other side. Hopefully that shows up. <clears throat> um, there's a well, we can start with like the most well-defined. When I say well-defined, I mean like highest contrast. And that will be, I think that's gonna be helpful um, so that as we move away further on the other side of the tree um, and as the tree get, the parts get further away from us, you know, they can then be lighter lines. Um, and so it's easier, I think, to start with bold lines and then lighten up as you go. Clouds, getting such a cloud feel. I love seeing, you know, these little clusters like this cluster is in front of this cluster, which is in front of this cluster. This cluster is in front of that one. Hmm. There is, a, I think the different sections he probably has tonal mark making that allows him to clarify um, sections of the tree that would later be used for color. You know, it could be light and dark too, um, but you know, this, you know, the marks that are spaced out for this cluster makes it lighter and the silhouette is darker. So this whole top um, triangle shape that comes forward um, in front of the piece that's immediately behind it which is darker. This cluster is in front of that cluster. Oh, gross. Oh, Nat just showed up. I wonder if he was living inside my drawing. <laughs> and the language, um, when you're looking at nature, you know, you have, you're, you know, there's so much, so many leaves, so many, so much infinity that you have to, you know, we'll, we'll, we can count how many divisions there are, you know, of clusters, but it's probably less than 20, you know? So it's almost like, if you think about the what cluster I just made, this, the boldest one, um, that's almost like one leaf. Whereas that cluster, that one leaf might consist of, you know, 10,000 leaves, you know, on a big tree. It's just, it's just an oversimplification, um, which is a, it's like a mental uh, skill. Like it's a, it's a technique that is tough to acquire because every leaf is so beautiful. So how are you going to like, you know, it's, it's necessary in order to draw, you know, to, to try to encapsulate infinity. Um, you know, in you know a manageable length of time, you know, as the light is changing, um, it calls for these kind of gross generalizations of nature, um, while still it maintains uh, a naturalism because he's not not looking at it. So it's general, but it's also um, it's also accurate. All right. So this is the first big cluster that is in bold. And I kind of, you know, try to go back, you know, I try to do things that were relative to it. And I worked my way back, probably still being a little bit too heavy handed. Um, I can maybe shade that down later. Now there's this next cluster that kind of comes instead of going up, this one kind of angles down. And that, you know, frames the dark area. I wish Stephanie was a, so Stephanie came to class yesterday and she was dealing with these exact issues where you know, there was this row of trees that were very close, uh, you know, that were the kind of the foundation of the composition, but there was actually, it looked like one row of trees, but on closer inspection, there's actually two. So we made the first row bolder, yellower, brighter. And then the second row, we toned them down a little bit to help push them back further. 
<clears throat> and that's what's happening right here. This is a bold um, cluster. This is another bold cluster. And then the areas that are behind it um, go darker. There's actually a third bold cluster up into the left. Mm, yeah. I love that. And, you know, so he's making marks that, you know, look like complex contours. And so instead of trying to mimic every single line, try to mimic the spirit of that, you know, contour, even though, we're, again, we're not really looking at the trees themselves, but to do what he's doing while looking at trees is really fun. Um, they just took a tree down in my neighborhood and it looks great. It was dead. It was, you know, the right thing to do. But it was also sad, you know, it's yeah. a really old tree. And I have not drawn it. I think I showed it in a couple of videos looking out the window, but probably when you lose a tree, it's just like you think it's always going to be there. Oh, mm -hmm. look at the branch. Mm -hmm. So I think yeah, there's, I think there's, after the clusters of brand, of uh, trees come out, I think he then goes over and, and spikes the tree plumes with, uh, with branches. And then there's this epically dark, you know, one of the darkest, you know, it's the underside of the tree. So, <clears throat> It uh, looks, there's, it, it's tough to read exactly where the shadow is coming from, you know, where, exactly where the light source is coming from, but no matter whether the light source is from a, the left or the right or directly above, the underside um, is going to be the darkest tone. So this last little cluster over here, um, you know, this is, you know, the marks that go darkest and they really show that this, the, the tree, goes under, there was an underside to that. Oh, great. So I'm gonna move, um, gotta move this over because he gives us a um, kind of like a sister tree. Um, so this is, you know, the main, you know, our main tree that has these you know, the plumage is on this side and then it does have comes up that side with the branches and I will actually just round that out. But then there's a whole nother tree that has a similar break. So it's like the pitchfork, the two pointed pitchfork steak knife. Um, this has a two pointed steak knife as well and has a, a whole, you know, uh, series of hierarchy plumages and branches as well behind it. So there's really there's one main tree and then a second tree behind that. Man, that's awesome. I think I have real estate on my drawing. My drawing is a little bit smaller, like overall, than his, which I think is, you know, actually helpful for this for this situation. Um, you know, where does the first tree end, and where does the second tree begin? Well, he had it clear in his mind. I would say that it's not that clear. Um, in the drawing, you know, to, for us, but I think I just found it. I drew the line and I think he defines it um, just by this tone. It gives us a little bit of dark notes on the underside. <clears throat> and that passes behind our original. Cool, and I think this is where the second tree begins. It's almost like this fan shape. I'm trying to see the whole and comes down just like this. And the base of that fan, there's a whole smaller one that might even show this little bowl shape below. So I am going from one, from known into the unknown. And, you know, I, I, what I'm saying is I quickly want to get into the, you know, you draw a tree generally by doing the trunk orienting it and then building branches and then adding the leaves. 
So I had to make the leaves relative to the first tree. And so now I'm like, really want to kind of quickly get back down and see where is. And I wonder if these are, um, you ever seen these um, long vines that grow up and they can, I think they can actually strangle and tear down yeah. trees. They can be really damaging. Um, I don't know if that's what this is, but this diagonal here sort of feels like it. It's not winding. Could be another tree trunk. I mean, this could be a burst of one, two, three, four, but these lines in here almost feel, have that feel of the, the, the thin um, wiggle, you know, that those, uh, those vines can, can take. And some of them can be really straight. I was hiking in the woods with one of my buddies and there's a long one that you could like use as a, a rope swing. Oh, man. I got on that thing and it broke mid, oh, mid oh, up and I had a, I had a hard fall. Well, then the other thing, I, mean, I, I, the fall wasn't the bad part. It was, I didn't want to get hit by this collapsing, you know, vine that was 200 feet, <laughs> literally 200 feet. And it didn't get me. It, it, it broke not all the way at the top, it broke in the middle. So there wasn't that much that came. Luckily it wasn't poison ivy. Uh -huh. uh, it was not. Yeah, because they can be big vines like that. Really? I didn't think they could get that big. Yeah. Um, the massing, the massing on our, you know, if you look at the, the way that these, the ground plane is anchored on this side, you have one uh, cube, cube form with, you know, kind of these, like these, this angled prism that as a rooftop, this one is more of a cylinder or kind of a trapezoidal form and that has its three dimensional properties. And then there's another form here, which I don't know if that's an actual architectural cottage, um, just in silhouette, but he takes us, you know, from here to here, to here, to there, to there. And he marched, we march all the way back. Um, I love it. That's a clock tower. I tell you what, I am playing with fire here with, uh, with drawing being exposed like this, like, you know, if, I mean, imagine if I, my pencil tip, you know, made an, you know, an uh, erroneous or extraneous mark. It's just really nice to work off of a masterpiece. <laughs> I can't even believe it. I mean, I don't even, I, I can't even believe it. This is such, this is very, very special. It's very nice, really. I just can't believe how, uh, you know, I mean, this guy's working on, I mean, th this is quality on a, as far as the, the functions of a human brain with, the, with, con with art content, I mean, I would put, I mean, I'm, I would put this guy up there with anybody. I mean, you're going to tell me that this is not, you know, parallel with like Mie. I mean, look at these strokes. You might really enjoy attending that virtual. I want, yeah, yeah. I, would love to. I hope that hopefully they post it. Hopefully they're able to post it. Let me finish this tree and the, um, so this is what I meant by the, um, the prism and the cube. So, you know, we have a clear front plane um, and then, you know, these horizontal lines give us these bracelet lines um, and even the layers of the, I mean, look at how the, the, the intelligent layering to get from, you know, the human element down to the roots and then back up into the base of this hay bale, 
the corner of the hay bale, and then the side. So it's almost like a, what do you call it? A, um, like a tissue box shape. Yeah. And then, you know, these are prisms. They're, this this feels like a hairpin turn. You know, it's almost like the this material is flopped over on itself. And I, I, I certainly hope it's not. It doesn't read like a cottage or a barn, but um, the corner of the tissue box is being obscured by, um, I don't think it's a thatched roof, but it has this kind of triangle, this triangle of uh, material that flops over and then it's stacked high. You get these ridges that come down. Oh, you get a light triangle flopped over and then you get immediately a dark triangle. That's kind of a nice little touch. I keep making, keep growing smaller and smaller. Might be my, that might be my ego. <laughs> oh, look at the, the these, these little, it's this little sideways staircase. This could be a roof. But that would mean that the tree is enormous. Yes. I mean, trees are huge, huge. <laughs> and not even that big. I mean, not, I mean, not even that big. It's really not. I mean, think about it. This, this, a uh, yeah. I mean, if that this was like the side of a, a person's like say this big, not that. It's not that. It's not that big. Right, let me finish up these trees. Oh, that's what I did. I had to go do this. I had to do the little. A little cottage or whatever the the hay bales so that I could do the the main trunk and then I had to do the secondary trunk which is a nice bow a nice bowing There's this lower cluster, which I'd already anticipated. Wow, look at this array. You see a little horseshoe? I'll see what I mean. So the horseshoe would run this way, but it's created by a series of um, like downward strokes, one side plane. Oh yeah, gosh. I mean, it's just, it's a, it's a brand new set of marks that yeah, I have not yet been introduced, and it may be a, like a different type of tree. I mean, these the the foliage on this side seems to kind of shoot out. Wow! Oh. oh my God! Look at that S curve. He was just in the, he was in that, in the zone. Hmm. It's funny how I missed that one. <clears throat> and I used I used graphite today. You know, this is probably lead. To be honest with you, um, lead is great in that it's 
it's not it's it functions it, it feels like i actually gotta go get some lead um and start drawing with it but um lead is is like pencil in its metallic nature um rather than conte conte was compressed charcoal that was mixed with some wax to kind of mimic lead um lead goes graphite is gray lead is black so um it takes lead takes to the paper a lot like graphite but it goes two or three steps darker in its value oh um, nice yeah and that's why so you mean i can even see it you can even see it here like i'm making like this concerted effort to like give me give that dark silhouette of the tree he didn't need to do that i skipped i did, was doing these drawings yesterday with conte conte mimics this um but this is not conte this is pencil i mean it's and it's lead pencil um maybe that's why he was so depressed because he was getting lead poisoning the conte pencil i have is very sort of textured because it's got something mixed in it, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, it's Conte is sort of like a compressed char. I, it, I don't know what it is, and I don't think they tell you what it is because they have their formula. Um, but I, it's it's essentially a compressed charcoal or a, a black pigment of some kind, um, whether it's organic pigment or whether it's other, you know, a, 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 a formulated pigment. Um, and then it's mixed with their, you know, their unique brand of like wax binder. And the binder is a weak binder and it, you know, scrapes the particles onto the paper really nicely. Yeah, it's really cool to work with it. I remember when we did the stone cutters, the Georges Seurat stone yeah. cutters, and we used that and it was really nice to have that sort of scratchy texture. Well, did I take a picture of my drawing? I didn't, that would be really sad. Maybe I didn't, so stupid. So we did, I did a demo in my uh, in-person class. Uh, it's kind of turned into a portrait class actually, um, not by design, but by, that's what people were interested in doing. And I did a Velasquez uh, chart, you know, I sketched one of his paintings in Conte. And I thought I took a photo of it, but it's not in here. Recents. And you would have been able to see how selectively uh, with less effort, you're able to get these really rich darks. Mm. What would happen if I went over my graphite with my Conte? They would clash. Okay. Um, mainly because of, not because of the Conte, but because of what the graphite does with the paper. The graphite is a me metal and it makes the, it basically seals off the fibers of, of the paper. It doesn't allow the fibers to, to hold anything else. It's like trying to draw on the hood of a car. Oh. You know, so slippery um and then the conte with the the conte will be black so like even a light conte mark is so much darker and so much richer than even the heaviest of uh graphite marks so then the graphite that does look beautiful and harmonious and unified here you add an element that's darker and then it just dies graphite is so gorgeous and it's like kind of it's almost like amongst its friends and family there's a lot of has a lot of confidence but then as soon as they go out in the public they don't hold up <laughs> it, it just can't it can't compare to higher contrast materials um it's you know the kids do it all the time with color pencils you know they sketch they're like think they're doing color they think they're drawing in pencil so they're like oh i'm doing graphite pencil then i'll just add colors to it and then all of their pencil lines just look like dirty uh yeah muddy muddy you know 
Um, there's a there's a, another in the he's giving us like this kind of playful mark variation everywhere. But you know the, the ones that happened up here with the horseshoe was kind of fun. The horseshoe into the S curve, and then he does it again with these dead branches uh, coming out of the bottom. <clears throat> You know, something happened to that tree. So I can push that one. And this one's going to be a little bit lighter. And get this gap. And then that line, ooh, way, way, way too dark. And his, his little squiggle is fun too. Yeah, you can, you can almost imagine. You can, if you can imagine drawing trees and then also imagine him with his, you know, his, you know, he, he's, he is a, he's not wasting any time here. Yeah. But he's also not cutting any corners. That's what's so, that's what's so beautiful about this. I love the little bank of the stream. We're getting into that the shoreline. And then our little bunny rabbit is drinking water. Cool. Yeah, I made my, I made my, I made the bank of my stream so much closer and I made the, so the left side of my picture is a lot closer to us. It's actually more natural, more like he did it, not necessarily natural, but more the way Cotman made the decision. And then I was having my ego put in check over here. So I was like cowering um, and, you know, I wouldn't say clammed up, but I definitely, went way smaller and which is actually helpful because now it fits on now the design actually fits onto the rectangle here in the zoom video there's still so much more it doesn't entirely fit So this is a this is a really important distance um, between the corner of our tissue box and then the start of the um, uh, you know I'll call it I'll just call it a cylinder or half a semi cylinder you know it still has straight edges you know it's a vertical dome and then another you know side um, and it is you know significantly lower I did put a mark in there now we're now I collaborated with Cotman. I put a pencil mark on there. Oh wow, one for the ages. Oh god, now I don't know if I should remove it. I don't think he can. I don't think he minds. You know, these. I'm. I'm wondering what's inside of here. 
you know, what's, what is this a Baha'i love? And like the, uh, his excuses for these mark making, it's just a blast. And then look at this coming out. Is that a distant tree? It must be a distant tree. It's amazing that it comes out of the center of that. Thing. Yeah. These, uh, yeah, the I would argue even four parts to the roof. Um, there's the the hairpin uh, overhang over the corner, and there's the first wedge. And then there's a second wedge, and then there's a third wedge. And they all have different contours and different levels of connection. And then they all turn, you know, may basically go down the side of the tissue box edge in unique ways. Um, so just like with, it's it sort of, it's not abstract, but it's, there are, you know, this theme and variation, you know, there's these elements that are on the top of the box and then they all hang over in different ways. They all come down at different gradations. And then, um, and then the, the edging of the top are, you know, some are broken, some are solid. It's just these, this, like this automatic, um, you know, it's like, a, it's like you can hear it in his brain. He's like, okay, you know, like this is, When you're going to design something, I mean, everything is designed. And I wonder, and I wonder if he had to like, I wonder if he was just working intuitively. I mean, of course he was, but you know, I wonder if he was just like, okay, wait a second. If you ever had to like pause and think, how am I going to do this one? Or if he just started and just by through working, gave him gave him the answers. And of course, it's a combination of all of those things. But yeah, this is um, a very, very natural way. I mean, I, this feels very, I feel very, very uh, at home in this landscape. Nice. Amazing. I didn't do the tower. I've got to do the tower. Assuming it's the tower. There's my little sketch. All right, not done yet, but still. That was most of the, those are most of the elements. Yeah, the um, the horizon line back here is super important. Yeah, these these horizontal elements that are on this whole far left hand side from the bank to the stream to the platform where the the shepherdess sits to the the horizon line, you know, where the where the, the ground hits the hill and then the hillside. Those are you know those those horizontals are so key. So he cut it down. 
Um, it looks like the, the paper itself looks like it extends a little bit over to the off, off screen slightly. I love this um, really unified silhouette, uh, you know, this, this third object. The hierarchy of these three masses that are on the ground, you know, light side, shadow side, rooftop, and then, you know, front side, far side, no contrast. Um, and then this is just one, like a, like a solid blob. Well, we finally got to do some drawing. Yeah. I think I need to get going soon. Me too, I gotta go walk the dogs. Can we have a quick show and tell? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yourself first, if you're ready. Ooh. Yankees. It's really pretty. It's like gorgeous. Nice, nice contrast. Yeah. Um, the only the, my only issue was the um the the you're excited about the the white tree, like kind of going yeah. all the way up. It it might be too it might be too, too uniform. Excited? No, just too uniform. Like maybe mm. like make it you know one side. Yeah, you know, one line, one silhouette side darker. Maybe make yeah. it go from light to dark. Uh, yes. You know, I mean, just like just like it's like one solid cord, which I don't think would make sense with all of those branches and trees and light bouncing around. You know, just, yeah. I mean, the, the, you can you could almost you could almost make the same argument for the dark tree. You know, like you could lighten up if you darken or tone out some of the lights on the light one, and then lighten I up some. Dude, you have. Yeah, so it I, does the dark. one. Yeah, you can actually, the dark one does have more variation. I can like take, out more of the dark. I take out more of the dark and add in, and take out more of the white, straight lines of the white tree. Yeah, okay. Uh, what a, um, I don't want to say Rolodex, but what a repertoire of, of mark making, uh, like tools that you could then go out and, you know, look at a tree and just employ immediately. You know, like if you go just like, turn to look outside and then draw the tree using yeah. all of those you know um you know kind of like newly i'm not new but they're just they're just unique i mean i haven't really i haven't really seen it as clear as this before um, okay um adele let's see yours yeah mm, nice oh my gosh i love the tree on the left Holy crap! Yeah, and you're um, you're, you're that might be it. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh! What if the um, yeah, I think you're. Uh, I see what you're seeing with the figure, <clears throat> and that makes a lot. Of sense. 
Yes, it really does. Look I really just good. decided what it was going to be and, you know, stopped. I think, <laughs> I think that's what it is. Yeah, I, I think it, I think it is too. And I think it might be not necessarily a horse drawn, but it could be a, um, no, I see those two little horse ears now. It could just be two people or one person. Or they may be um, uh, tools sticking out of the hay on the wagon. Oh gosh, yeah. Wow. Um, yeah, excellent. Um, all right, cool. I wish, uh, will you guys send me photos of those? Sure. I'm not here to take pictures in there. Well, and they're I honest, used, so I used um, what we call the 314 pencil. Yeah. Do you, you ever use that? What is that? 314 pencil? Yeah, it's a draft. It says drafting D -R D -R -A -U -G -H -T -I -N -G on it. <laughs> um, but we used to use this um, in school. And is it, it's like a deep. It's, it's a very soft, I don't, don't really know what it is. I mean, except that it's very soft and it's a, it's a thick lead. Very, it's very dark, dark and soft. It goes darker. Uh huh. It's made by yeah. Sanford. Yeah. Cool. An architect. I'll, I'll check that. Yeah. Where they poop all over the place. I will. Uh, I'll see you guys next week. If you could send me photos of the finished version, oh. and um, hopefully the <clears throat> did the photo, the high resolution photo, did that come up? Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Thank you. Uh -huh. right, guys, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. It was really fun. Yeah. Bye.